so climate change is a threat that scientists are studying and trying to stop? Climate change is a big problem. And some and since we're younger, I mean, we are we're the future of of the rest of our planet. I think maybe we should work on it and then we can get better. Yeah. Then we can earlier. get better earlier. earlier. So like it's easier to study now cuz then you can learn even more when you get older and older and older. Taylor is a STEM school this starting this year and as part of the STEM initiative I did some training at George Mason University this summer learning about problem-based learning and I chose to do my unit based on a climate change theme. The challenge that the children had to solve was how they could protect plants and animals in their habitats from the effects of climate change. Trees grow, acorns that give food to the squirrel. The climate change is things? destroying, is making these plants, making it too hot for these plants to grow, so the squirrel can't get food. Yes. And, and, and then, then the hawk can't get food. Here's our factory. factory. And it says factories make too much smoke that it's bad for the earth. Help by making factories solar power. Because actually, it was a good project to learn about it, what's happened to the animals, and how they stay safe from climate change. The fruit bats, is the climate change or the snow will affect the cherries, and the cherries won't get rotten and stuff. So the, the climate change is affecting the bats to have no food. So there may be the maybe some of them will die, maybe some of them will free their wings will freeze and fall down. So we learn about it to see what's making that happen. The bears need water and fish in the pond here. And also we made this little um, snake family and if they don't have enough food they'll die. Good. Also, we made a threat right here because we can make less factories because the smog makes um, more more carbon dioxide and that can create droughts. And then the bears and the snakes would, and most animals who live in tropical where they need lots of water will die. It makes more greenhouse gas and the greenhouse gas flux down back into the water. It heats the water um, really hot and it makes more hurricanes. So this island was peaceful, but when lightning hits, this little owl's home die, um, gets destroyed, everything will basically lose their food chain. The food chain will break. So this is all the rain, and this is all this flooding. So the flooding is really bad for it because they can all flood, and these are big waves. There is a major threat in the Arctic and Antarctic climate. Fossil fuels, which I highlighted because it's a special word, are being burned, warming the earth. The earth is supposed to be warm, but not too warm, and that's how it is. So uh, this project is about the threat to penguins because of global warming. We're trying to show that when it does get more warm that the penguins do need a lot of cold climates, so we would not like penguins to be extinct because they for one they're amazing creatures and many people like them. Two, um they're like the hit scene when scientists travel to the Antarctic. They're trying to find more about penguins and they can't find anything about them if penguin out about them if penguins are extinct. The engagement level was huge. It was fascinating to hear from parents that dinner time conversation was now about climate change, that children were um, guiding their parents into making wise decisions because of climate change, and to see how they took what they had learned about extreme weather, about habitats and the environment, and really connected it to their reality. It's important to know about climate change when you're a kid, so if you want to fight climate change when you're an adult, you can like be a scientist and go to places and 
help them. We, if we want to become someone who studies it, we can know something about it so we don't just end up where we don't know anything. We can collaborate with other scientists so if they thought something else, we can tell them the real truth about Their work on this unit was especially exciting because they truly felt empowered and felt that they could make a difference in something that affects people all around. It was relevant. They acted like scientists. They did the work of scientists. Each day as we wrapped up a lesson, we would say, what work did we do today that real scientists do? So they totally understood that the work going on in the classroom was the kind of work that real scientists do. And from that, I have a level of excitement about science in my classroom that I've never had. My kids every day are telling me how much they love science, and so many of them now are looking forward to a career that involves science. It's been really a thrilling experience.